Here we go. Let's start with a prayer. So placing my hands on my heart, taking in that deep cleansing breath of love and gratitude. So grateful for this opportunity to come together, to rest in this heart space. Grateful to affirm our oneness and the oneness of all life. Grateful for our willingness to remain open-hearted, open-minded and our dedication to our desire to shining away any and all blocks to love. We are having a healing right here and now and we know that we are perfect, whole, and complete. We have just forgotten to laugh. So we're calling in all of our mighty companions, all of our earthly and heavenly helpers to embrace us, to surround and support us, to guide us, to lead us, to bless us. Everyone here and all those who may listen later. And we're grateful to share all of those blessings and the all good of God that we are with everyone because we are one with them. In grace and gratitude, we let it be, and so it is. Amen. So we are in chapter 28, section four, the greater joining. Um, I'm going to start us off with the second half of paragraph nine, where he says, how holy is the smallest grain of sand when it is recognized as being part of the complete picture of God's son. The forms, the broken pieces seem to take mean nothing for the whole is in each one. And every aspect of the son of God is just the same as every other part. And when I was reading that, I was thinking about, I mean, like what he's saying is a single grain of sand is the complete desert. I'm so sorry, Linda, what paragraph did you read from? I read from paragraph nine, about halfway through. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You know, a, a single drop of water is the entire ocean. An acorn contains everything that it needs to become a mighty oak tree. And we are made of stardust. So we are the universe walking around, acting as though we are separate from the universe. Um, and that just kind of blows my mind when I think about it, <laughs> because it really is a, um, a confirmation that we are perfect, whole, and complete, exactly as we are, that the only reason why we don't think that we are is because we are resisting parts of ourselves or parts of our lives that we deem is not being good. Um, and I'm right there. I mean, <laughs> you know, there are things that are, you know, within this body or within the life that I appear to be living that I'm like, yeah, I don't like that. I would prefer not to be experiencing that. I would prefer not to look at that or see that or feel that. And it's that resistance to what is in my line of sight that makes the suffering if I would just accept it all and know that there is good encoded in all of it, even if I can't see it, then I could just relax. 
you know, and, and be joyful with what is in every given moment. Look at it as the gift that it is. So that's, that's where I'm starting us off at today. And you know, Linda, I don't think I'm alone in saying this, that we also have a resistance to seeing ourselves as being perfect, whole, and complete. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> I'm right there with you, sister, because, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, and you often come to mind, Deborah, when we're reading stuff like this, but I'm thinking the same thing for myself. Like, am I saying I'm perfect, whole, complete, even though I've been diagnosed with diabetes and high blood pressure, and I appear to have these digestive issues that have been ridiculously uh, flaring up for the last eight months or so, you know, making my life feel unbearable at times with pain and um, and humiliation, you know, am I really willing to accept that and embrace it exactly as it is? Well, what's the, the alternative? The alternative is I'm resisting it and I'm just creating more tension in my body. I'm just creating more stress in my mind. I'm just creating more of the stress hormones flowing through my body, which will create more inflammation, which will, you know, just activate right, yeah. it even worse. So, yeah. Yeah, seeing myself as perfect, whole and complete, I'm not completely there yet, but that's my goal. And I know it in my head right now. I'm not completely feeling it with every cell fiber and function of my being as of yet, but that is my goal. Well, Linda, I think you just spoke for all of us so beautifully. I love how you choose what you choose and then you can respond uh, just with such clarity. And the simple idea of relaxing into what is when I can remind myself to do that it's so simple and it really works because mostly I just want to be all over figuring things out wanting to stop things wanting to begin things wanting to like I have no idea and and just um when you use the word relax I could just feel myself relax mm -hmm. so I need to just kind of post put post-it notes up with relax because <laughs> I really believe in relaxing and yeah. that we also make everything so complicated and yeah. I want simplicity I know the course keeps telling me that this is simple and so in that growing it's like how can I find the simplicity within this and stop trying to figure it out and and just all that I do and um, even in reading you know I love the course it's very compelling to me I'm drawn to it but I read it and half the stuff I'm like I have no idea what that says and I'm always so impressed because you always know the answer <laughs> and I just love that and so it's great that you're leading us but um I love this book. I love the wisdom in it. Uh, and it gives me hope, especially the lessons, the lessons, the text, the lessons I can call precious, especially after you get to number 50. I don't know. There are precious words in the text that get soothe me and help me to keep sticking with it, you know, yeah. and then the computer, the computer, the not computers, although <laughs> the community is precious. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Robin. Nancy Gale, uh, just one second, because I did want to mention too, um, especially to Deborah, but to all of us, and to remind myself that when I'm accepting what is, that includes my sense of resistance. That includes my anger that things are the way that they are that includes my sadness that um and frustration and that includes all of it all of it no matter what i'm feeling so if i'm enraged or if i'm in a puddle on the floor it means accepting that too so yeah just wanted to throw that in before we move on nancy gale good to have you here 
Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Whoops. The earphones make a whole big difference. Um, <clears throat> I'm just throwing out my the thoughts. Um, I just got up a little while ago. And the first thought that came to me was, it's like, I'm just going to put the thoughts out there. Um, a therapist told me years ago that um, I asked him a question of what it's like, what's wrong with me or something like that. And the one thing, the thing that, he, that stuck out the most, he said, that um, he thought that I have, or that I had experienced com almost complete tactile, tactile touch deprivation. And that's the thought that came to me this morning. I said, oh, that's, and the thing, is, and then I linked it to my daughter and, um, and everything around me. And it's like, I remember that when I was, Two and a half, that was the first, the first, um, the trauma thing when my brother was born in. And I dumped him out of the bassinet because I, so for some reason I, I hadn't been allowed to see him. Even though he was just a few yards away from me all the time. And I remember the, my mother, my mother told, my father picked me up, pulled me up out of the, off the floor, out of the blankets and hauled me, right? My mother was, picked my brother up, went in the other room. And she yelled, my father, she said, he said, she said, don't pick her up. Don't even touch her. She's bad. And that fifth morning, and it's like, I said, oh, and all through my life. And I said, that came back. I said, right. And it's like, then I stuck, started sucking my thumb, you know, this, um, it's bad to touch myself. And then my daughter was born. It was like that thing came back. Well, how do I take care of this little human here? I have to bathe her and hold her and feed her and all these things. How can I do that without touching her? And I remember it's like I just numbed out. I did all those things, but I never felt this. I did to this day, the last time. I was, when she died, when she was in the room, and I walked over to her, and I touched her hand. It was so warm. And I thought, that's the first time I remember actually feeling her. Anyway, um, I love this. This I read this when I went to, to bed last night. And I, I can't, I didn't mark, which I said, each time I said, mark that, mark that, mark that. Um... This is like, um, like the pieces. It talks about the pieces, and like recently, it's like I, I had this idea. It's like in the same the grains of sand and everything, and it's like we are each a piece. We think we are each a piece of the whole. It it was like I, all of these things, um, these images that are that I've been thinking. It's like. They're right in this piece, and it's like the answer. And it, it's like, so I questioned all those thoughts, and it's like, and here's the answer. It was only a few days ago that I was thinking these things, and, and, and all of the questions I had were answered in this section. Um, and I didn't mark anything, but it's, and it's like almost in each, each section um, is an answer. It's all there, and it's the truth it talk, the Bible says, I'll go to the Bible, um, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And all these years I said, I'm, I was saying, I want to be free to be me. Never un, never getting, it's like, what do, what, what do I want to be free from? <laughs> I want to be free from the freaking stupid dream, the lie. It's all a lie. And... And now I know that, and I am free. And it's like, oh, okay. But anyway, it's just this, I was like what Robin was saying. When I read this, it's like, it's just, I know it's the truth. I mean, the first time I opened it, I don't remember the page. I started reading, it was at the top of the page on the left-hand side page. What? And I started reading whatever it was, and I said, oh, this is the truth. I knew it. <laughs> And it was like, okay, and I had no, pro I've had no problem with the whole thing. And it talks about in the beginning where, you know, the Christian language, oh, I did have one problem when it, 
I started reading and it said, it was talking and I say, we this and we that. And I'm thinking, who is we? It's like, somebody's talking to me and who, it's like Jesus and I go, who is we? <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> but anyway, that was the only problem I ever had with it. And um, it just, it's just like, pardon me. Anyway, I'm done because I can't remember I mean, I'd have to go read the whole thing and then say, this is the part, this is the part, this is the part that I wanted to, to mark and I didn't mark it. But it was, oh, I know it. It's like, I know people have trouble reading it and I had all a lot, re the trouble was, what hell is it they say he read, like Shakespearean, whatever. In and so, pentameter, yes. Yeah, and when you read it like that, word for word for word, it gets can totally confuse you. So what I do is I like, um, I just like read through and it's like, I don't, I stopped reading every single word and it's like when it's, a, and I said, that if in English that I understand, reading something I read it that way and then I said oh well and the meaning just comes right out of it but if I stop and read word by word by word then it's like you know and you've got the not before the thing and all this I just read it as if it was just plain what are you laughing <laughs> it's so it's just amazing yes <laughs> so I'm done I'm done I'm done <laughs> and what I've found really helps me is to understand the reading better is to go into the Pathways to Light website down to the bottom and, and click on the text simplified. I think that's what it states. And read the passages from there, and it, it's very helpful. And I would encourage anybody who's having difficulty understanding the, the reading of the text to go in and, and find that text simplified section and read that. Uh, it, I, I, I agree with that, Deb, because what's like when um, the lessons, like, when when, uh, Linda, when you read the lessons, you that's what you read. The the uh, that it makes total sense. So I thought I'm going to get the book, that book, and um, is the text like that too, sort of like that. Well, I'm talking about the website itself. You don't need to. I mean. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. I'm done. <laughs> Oh, one, minute, one more thing. I We put the bird feeder that I have out here. Um, the um, There's a pair of cardinals. And there's um, little, the little sparrows. And then there's the goldfinches now. And I, there's it's just a little feeder, a uh, little tray thing. And they'll sit there and the male will feed. It's like it goes and gets them seed. And they feed one another. And that's like the male feeds. It's like just awesome to watch this love, natural love out here. Um, I better stop. <laughs> thank you, Nancy Gale. And thank you, Deborah. That's a great idea. Uh, and Nancy Gale, I was laughing because I'm right there with you. Like reading it sometimes if I try and take it too literally, you know, it's like my eyes start to cross. And <laughs> but yeah, I'm right there with you. So that's what I was laughing about. Linda, can I just interject and just tell Nancy Gale how much she's loved? Oh my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. I adore you, Nancy Gale. Yeah. Thank you, Amir. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, me too. I, I, Nancy, every time. <laughs> I, I just want to hug you and um, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. I appreciate that. Thing. Oh, and thanks for the prayers. I don't have the results or anything yet, but <clears throat> thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. We know all as well. Yeah. And we're glad that you allow us here to virtually touch you and hug you and love on you. So. Um. Yeah. And you know, you, you know what, what? One thing I was to say, my my prayer partner that I have now, when it's talking about, you know, don't join, don't join your brother, your brother, don't join the dream. 
his dream, her dream, whatever. Do not join the dream. Join the person or the, you know, the essence, the person, the spirit, not the dream. My prayer partner does that. And it's like, I think that this morning when I read that, I said, oh, that's what she does. That's what you guys do. That's what the prayers are in, in, in the, the thing, right? Yeah. That's, what, that's what we do. We, do, we don't uh, validate the dream. We validate the person, the, well, person, you know, whatever. That's exactly what we do here. It is. So, yeah, anyway. You see the perfection. Yeah. Yeah. Could I Nancy, say Nancy, Nancy, um, yeah. Phil, uh, first and then Mark. Go ahead. Right. I, I just wanted to say to Nancy Gale, me three. And then if, if we go through the whole screen, Nancy Gale, every is going to everyone is going to say me four, me five. <laughs> so and, and thanks for all the shares and I like when Nancy Gale talked about uh, accepting the atonement or don't join your brother in his. You know, that was what stood out for me. Like, and I said, oh, it says accepting the atonement for yourself means I'm right on the top, the first paragraph, not to give support to someone's dream of sickness and of death. It means that you share not his wish to separate and let him turn illusion on himself. Nor do you wish that they be turned instead on you. And thus they have no effects and you are free of dreams of pain because you let him be. And one of the thought that came up for me is like, you know, okay, so I don't join my brother in his or her pain. And it doesn't mean that I don't feel or I, ha I have no feeling. I do, but I'm not, I'm still holding the light of the person because most of that, I said, do not, when I do not judge the other for how they're feeling, is, and I am holding the light for them is where the healing of myself also happens because I'm not telling them you shouldn't feel that way. But at the same time, I'm holding the light without me saying any of that. You know, because it's, it's, it's in the mind, we're doing it in the mind. We can do that anyway. The power of the mind. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, I agree with you. So, so I mean, that, that was totally like, you know, holding their light is what we do. And which is, which is also holding our own light. I know there is that suffering, you know, and right now it is so easy to side on with whatever favors to me, but is that my role here? Or am I, can I hold my light and hold their light wherever they are? Yeah. Uh, but then I had a little bit of a question and I would, uh, this is on paragraph four. And I think I got, I'm totally lost here and I would love anyone to give me an example. I think it's in the line five. I don't, maybe line starts with you know, verse four in paragraph four. Let him acknowledge who he is, but not supporting his illusion by your faith. For if you do, if you, if you do, you will have faith in yours. With faith in yours, he will not be released. And you are kept in bondage to his dreams. And I'm like, huh? Well, this, this is confusing now to me. Oh, well, what does that mean? I said, and I said, what does this really mean? Can somebody give me an example? 
like I, I got the first one and now I'm, I'm totally lost. I think it's the same as what you were talking about earlier about, you know, we're not joining our brothers and sisters in their dreams because then we're just affirming the dream. So, so I think that's all that he's saying here is if you have faith in um, your belief in them or your belief in their story, you're just perpetuating their story with your own belief. Okay, because I was like, with faith in yours, he will not be released. And I'm like, my faith is, I, tr I believe that even though whatever they're sharing, they're still a light. Right. And yeah, like, I think uh, it's I think it's a semantical thing uh, that you're uh, having trouble with because I think uh, when it when it says for if you do you will have no no by not subverting putting his illusions by your faith so it's putting faith in his illusions by doing that you will have faith in your illusions. Yeah, but your faith is really in God, Phil. So That's in yours belief. means your yeah. illusions. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Phil. I, thank you, Mark. Can okay. I just add? I think it's like, because um, that's exactly the same piece that I, when I say what? And that's like, but it's like just taking that sentence out of the whole thing. But if you go back and start a little further back and then just um, read it and and continue reading. It's like reading it like it's in in, in English, as if <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it, it flows. It's like if you stop it, just one piece. It's the same problems of how we read this thing. Whether it's the, it's like what he's Mark says. It's, it's semantics. Yeah, exactly. It, yeah, stuck in that. So, so if you it's read it as if this like. Do you want me to do that or not? Let somebody else talk. But that I think that's that's the yeah. same. That's an example of what I was talking about. Exactly. Thanks, Nancy Gale. Mark, go ahead, and then Chris. And thank you, Phil. Yeah. Yeah. Hi all. <laughs> well, let me start saying that I'm uh, I'm having a big smile all the time when I'm listening to you, uh, guys. Uh, I, I, I stepped in uh, 15 minutes later, I guess. So I, I stepped in just when um, Nancy Gill was talking, but I loved what you were sharing, uh, Nancy Gill. Uh, and I really feel uh, um, a strong connection, uh, maybe a little bit more than, than the last uh, few times. Uh, I really like it. Um, what I was reacting what, what my reaction was was just a little small thing uh, when we're just when you were talking Nancy Gale, about um, uh, well take going with the flow of the text and and not getting stuck. Um, yesterday I listened to one of uh, um, uh, uh, Jennifer's uh, shows and she was talking about I was she, one thing she's I remember she was saying like if you're studying the Course in Miracles with your intellect, then the ego uh, is in charge. So trying to understand the Course in Miracles with your intellect can be of help in a way. I, I, my experience is it can, it can, it can build the construction on which you can hang up the ideas but if you follow it only with your intellect then you're gonna get stuck and and it's the ego that's driving and you you cannot uh, 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 understand uh, the concepts just as concepts and then also uh, when I just think about my own experience, I mean, uh, uh, I, I also, uh, quite a lot of the times when I read through text, there are passages which I 
which is abacadabra for me. I don't understand it, but somewhere I took the decision, okay, when it when it's abacadabra, I can read it maybe one more time, but then I need to just get on. And um, it's much more uh, helpful to uh, take the lessons and really try to live the lessons. And um, well, I guess the insights are coming when they should come. So. Yeah, thank you, Mark. I have that same experience, you know, and it, um, it says at the very beginning that he, he is like, he's repeating things over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, <laughs> because it, there are certain ways that we can actually understand it and take it into our heart. And then there are other ways where we're intellectualizing it and that's not helpful. That's not what the text was meant for. So yeah, exactly that. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Mark, for saying that. I did at the beginning also, uh, I really love to listen to Ken Wapnick years ago for him. For me, he explained it or he intellectualized it for me so that I could move from that into really taking it in and uh, being it, I suppose. But this thing about don't join his dream, this is really uh, an aha moment for me because I never thought of it that way when I'm someone is speaking to me about what's going on with them. Of course, I, I'm always in my mind thinking, all right, well, maybe we can, they could do this or that. I was on a call and um, forget what the person was talking about, but Amanda Snyder, who is spiritual counselor for me i was thinking in density and she basically she said to this person first thing she said was can i ask you a question and which i thought isn't that nice i'm you know getting the permission and then her second line was um would you be willing to see it differently and then that just took it right up to, and then she began to talk to her a little bit more. It just took away all the negativity because she wanted her to look at the light. So that, that was really, I remembered that. And I will remember don't join his dream too. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much, Chris. I'm also uh, something else that is coming to mind, uh, a story that Jennifer has told about a friend of hers who called her because she had had a um, a breakup with a boyfriend or something like that. And um, she was a fellow spiritual student and she made some comment when she first, when Jennifer first picked up the phone, something about, you know, I don't, I don't want to have spiritual counseling right now. I don't want to talk in a spiritual voice. I just need to vent first. And so she, she allowed her to do that, you know, complaining about this boyfriend and, you know, how he dumped her or whatever. And Jennifer's like, oh my God, he's a horrible person. We should go run him over with the car, you know, just making it so ridiculous so that they could get to the point where they could laugh about it. Um, you know, but when you're in it, allowing yourself to feel what you're feeling and acknowledge that you're having those feelings and then it's okay to have those feelings. It's okay to be angry and to be sad and to be, you know, whatever you are, it's okay to be that. It, you're not going to live there. That's not your intention to live there. And then you can come back to your right mind and to your loving heart and say, what is the most loving thing for me right now? You know, is it really to like macerate in this sense of feeling victimized by this breakup or whatever, or go over all of the ways that I could have prevented it or all of the things that he did that, 
you know, I should have broke up with him to begin with or whatever, you know, whatever you would be going over in your mind, it's okay to have those things, but you get to a point where you're just like, okay, I'm miserable. I don't really want Mm -hmm. to be miserable anymore. What is the loving choice here? And I would say to my sisters, when I would tell them something, I'd say, please don't tell me what to do. I'm just giving you what's going on because I didn't want any other influence on what I was, what was happening. I didn't want to hear anybody else's opinion because I wanted to just figure it out myself. So anyhow, it's just so great. Great, great, great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. And I've experienced that too, you know, um, and being a helper, you know, a two on the Enneagrams, I want to fix stuff for people. You know, I want to make sure that uh, the people that I love are having the very best experience in their lives as, as they possibly can. And, um, but not allowing them to have the experiences and go through the feelings in the experiences is not helpful. And it's the same for me. Um, and I do get very, um, offended when, when I'm talking to somebody and they start trying to give me solutions to the problem. That's, that's not what I was asking for. I just need an ear, you know? So I, I understand that. Who else would like to share? You know what, that one, I was just, I'm watching the screen, right? And I'm watching and I'm listening. And it's like, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, I'm, what do you call it? That's all, this is all part of our experience of being human. And I am watching it. And that's what, so it's then the thought, the butterfly coming out of the cocoon, don't mess with it. That's part of its experience into this, to the next uh, transition into that form, the next form, you know, and so the, just, and so I'm watching, I'm watching you, um, and that I'm the observer at the moment of all of this. Um, hey, this is really so, so cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, okay, am I, this is, okay, I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. And it's fun when we can get to the point where we're observing ourselves as well. Yeah. Thanks, Nancy Gale. Derwin and then Mary Lee. Thank you, Linda. Good afternoon to those who who I have not said hello to yet. Um, I don't have like this week. I'm more triggered by, (laughs) to be honest, and... um, when I hear you guys talking about the daily lessons and that those are more easy to grasp. And when I also hear about intellectualizing the text and if you read it slower word by word, you may get a little bit confused. I get a bit jealous because I am not reading the lessons at the moment. I stopped somewhere in January when I could not like keep up to the lessons. And now I'm at a point where I don't even sometimes dare to look into the, when Linda shares the message, the the lessons, I'm like, I don't want to see that I'm lagging behind. But it got me thinking, I'm I'm okay. I'm dealing with it. I'm finding my way. (laughs) But today, uh, not today. So when we were talking about the intellectualized, inter, reading the textbook um i remember i don't remember where i heard it in a podcast or so it's okay if you start in the course in miracles book with the text or it's okay if you start with a manual for teachers or it's okay if you start with the daily lessons as long as you start chronologically with one and then i'm reflecting on okay i came in the course we're now at chapter 28 i haven't read chapter one or two or three <laughs> And I'm, and and now I'm just wondering: Should I have been reading the daily lessons more? In a way, I'm fine with it, but I just wanted to also share this part. And it's also okay, I guess, as long uh, one, yeah, 
as long as I ask, listen and follow. And like you said, like, like, you know, what is loving for me? What is my highest and best choice in this? Um, I've learned already to listen to the, to my light and notice my darkness. For now that is fine. And I will catch up with the rest, with time. Most importantly, I'm here for the prayers and for the community. And um, I can share like this. Thanks. Exactly. Thank you, Derwin. I know the ego wants to use the things that we love that inspire us and expand our awareness the most as a, a, a weapon against us. You know, so the ego will say, well, you were doing it and then you stopped doing it. So you might as well just quit because you're so far behind now. And um, what I want to say to the ego <laughs> at that point, pardon my French, but fuck you ego, because <laughs> I'm starting exactly where I'm at and I'm going to be okay with that. You know what? I can do the lessons from the very beginning again next year if I want to. And if I don't want to, that's completely fine because no, wherever I am, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So it's all good. It's all good. So thank you for that, Derwin. Mary Lee. I started and doing, the, doing the lessons every day and I really feel like it's, it's helpful to me. And I know it takes a lot of time and sometimes I, I mean, the ego doesn't want to do it and wants to, you know, make excuses or whatever, but. I feel like it really adds to the overall course. And the other thing I'd like to say is remember um, that Jesus emphasizes willingness as being so very important, having a willingness to do it. Yes. yes. Yeah. And if you don't have willingness, have willingness to be willing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Deborah. I'm glad you're enjoying doing the lessons daily. Yeah. Yeah, I am too. I, I, you know, I'm trying to recite them hourly, like it suggests in the book, and I, sometimes I don't do it perfectly, but, you know, you just kind of have to do what you do and accept that as being okay, I guess. Yes, exactly, exactly. Just be happy exactly where you are. It's just an adventure that we're on. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Deborah. You're welcome. Yeah. Mary Lee, and then Mark. Oh. Oh. Hey, well, I've, um, in relation to the different comments, um, I appreciated hearing that, you know, s some of it aren't uh, necessarily reading the lessons. And I feel like I'm maybe halfway between um, what Deborah was saying about, you know, being willing to to really study and read the readings and look up um, different references that make it perhaps more understandable. I feel like I'm kind of halfway between that and Derwin saying I'm actually not reading the lessons. And I thought to myself that um, a lot of my help right now because I don't am, understand so much of the reading. I do usually try to read it over, <clears throat> but there's so much I'm not really understanding. Um, but uh, when L Linda, you said just a little bit ago that uh, sometimes a person just wants you to listen and I'm getting a lot from our group discussions that um, revolve around the reading. And I'll just share that I think I need a lot of work in that department because I recently uh, have gone, and I'm just kind of realizing this, gone through quite a frustration. There's a older lady that I know, by older, meaning older than me, uh, and she has been estranged from her daughter and her uh, daughter got cancer, um, pancreatic cancer. Uh, and a couple months ago, um, this older friend talked to me about that. 
and uh, how she hadn't spoken to her daughter in years. And I, you know, I'm, I'm um, like what you said, Linda, sometimes we just want to fix that, right? Like, like we might be able to fix it. So I said to her, well, I, if, if you need to fly and go see your daughter, I, I will accompany you. I will help you because she hasn't flown for years. And, you know, there's a lot of things different about getting tickets and so forth. And uh, no, she decided to stay estranged or not see her daughter or talk to her daughter or anything. And I said, well, maybe, maybe you could write a card. Would that help? So I was trying to think of that then as a solution. And I think she might have done that. Um, but this now fast forward to a couple days ago, well, her daughter died and um, the, the friend is very beside herself with grief. And so I'm wanting to be more peaceful and um, just listening for whatever reason that relationship was the way it was. I, I don't have to have a solution when someone shares with me. I need to practice on just listening instead of getting stressed and, you know, lose my peace over it. Uh, and try to, not that there's anything wrong with just mentioning something if someone is kind of looking for uh, thoughts about it, but um, I feel like I do lose my own peace sometimes in getting perhaps overly involved in someone else's lesson or life experience. Um, so I like liked all your comments uh, that I'm hearing and our discussions so often are the part that is a real help to me at this time. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Mary Lee. And I'm sure your friend so appreciates you being there for her. Um, you know, I'm sure she's not expecting you to be able to fix anything because nothing's going to bring her daughter back, you know, so, it, you know, thinking that you're going to be able to fix anything is a lesson in futility, right? So just being there for her. And I can remember when, um, when my friend Audrey's husband passed away and I just said to her, look, I know I'm going to say stuff that's going to be stupid because I don't know what to say. I don't know what you're going through and I don't know what to do for you, but I'm here and you can get mad at me if you want to. You can yell at me. You can scream at me. You can curse at me. I'm a big girl. I can handle it. So, you know, just letting her know that I don't know what we're, what I'm doing <laughs> you know, I don't know what to do for you. I don't know how to handle this for you or for myself. And, but I'm here, I'm here. And she appreciated that. And she has gotten mad at me for things that I have said that were not helpful in the moment, but it's all right. I'm learning, she's learning and we're maneuvering through it together. So I'm sure your friend appreciates you immensely, Mary Lee. So Mark, Rand and then Robin. Yeah, uh, hey. Um, I was thinking uh, uh, when uh, Darwin was uh, telling about lessons, uh, about uh, how how it went for me, because um, when I got uh, hold of the um, course to Mirgo, like the, uh, the book uh, for couple of years ago um I, I started by reading it and I I, I I i got like halfway maybe 
And then uh, uh, I tried to start with the lessons and I, I didn't come further than lesson 10 and uh, it didn't make any sense. I, and I, you know, I, I couldn't get up with the motivation and I stopped. And then there was a couple of years where, I, where it was just on the shelf. And then I st we started uh, last year and uh, I thought uh, this, this um, on the acim.org page uh, where there's uh, a daily lesson uh, 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 congruent to the calendar. Uh, I thought that was a good idea, but it wasn't the 1st of January. So obviously I couldn't start with lesson one and it wasn't the 10th of Janu January either. So I couldn't go to get on where I, where I left off. And I, I and I and I said to myself, okay, I don't I don't uh, care. I've 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 I've, <laughs> I've had a spiritual practice for many years, so I can start with uh, lesson uh, seventy. So I did that, and then I uh, and I I I, I hold a, I got on with one lesson each day, and uh, but of course I couldn't uh, um, I couldn't uh, do the lessons exactly like like they were uh, uh, intended. So uh, it wasn't that I could spend like a couple of minutes uh, twice a day or thrice a day or so, uh, but then I got on to the next lesson anyway. And, uh, and, and well, I got something out of it anyway, I did. But uh, when it came to lesson type like 200, I, I really didn't understand the lessons anymore. It was, uh, it, it was getting abracadabra for, for me. So I quit. And then I, it got to be uh, like December and I thought, okay, now I'm going to do restart, but now I want to do it really sincerely. So my practice now is that I do a, uh, a lesson and when I am really, um, 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 how do you say, um, when, when I'm not convenient, when I'm, when I, th when I think, okay, now I've done the lesson, like I want, wanted to do it. Then I go, go on uh, and I mean, we're uh, well into March. I don't know what the le daily lesson is now, but I'm in at lesson 62 or 63. So I, I did some pauses and that fits me uh, quite well. Uh, and I'm, I, I really also could uh, I, um, get rid of the idea that I'm, uh, that I'm not uh, good enough. Uh, it's just like, Okay, I'm doing it on my pace, but when I do the lesson, uh, like like uh, I want, like it should be done or should be done. I don't know if you should say should. It's there's no shoulds. It's just my way. Uh, now I feel I really uh, moving forwards. So um, so do it at your own pace. That's my uh, <laughs> advice. I'm sorry that I'm taking too much time because it's almost six. So uh, uh, I will be quiet now. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. I had a, a prayer partner that um, he would spend several days with a lesson before he would move on. It worked great for him. So yeah, do what you're inspired to do, not because you think you should. Exactly. Rand, welcome. It's good to have you here, brother. It's been a little well, while. Thank you. It's been a while. Indeed, it has. I just wanted to have a quick short note. I, I, I consider the lessons a 10 year project. You do them, you do them, you do them, you do them. You get a little more each time. You skip some years, you skip some lessons. You jump in where you can, it, and, uh, but you do get what you can at, along the way. And that's what it's been for me. Uh, I haven't had the discipline to always get every day but uh, I have been through them a few times and uh, just wanted to point that out. It's first time through, you're gonna be confused, but as the time marches on, it gets better and better. So just keep going back and eventually it starts to make more and more sense. Yes, thank you. Wise words, my friend. Absolutely, see you later. All right, thanks Rand. Robin. Thank you. Um, golly, this is all so wonderful to listen to each other. And um, I'm just going to be repeating, um, going back to the reading the course and remembering when I really first started, it seemed like another language. I had no idea. And I was like, I'm not going to be able to do this. But I was really desiring to get 
to know the Course in Miracles. And I did, because I would take each sentence and try to understand it or reading it slowly and trying to understand it. And then one day I woke up and just said, just read it. And if you get one sentence, that's enough. And that's what happened. I just started reading it normally, not trying to figure it out. And I, every, I, I honestly think every day there was one jewel that blew my, you know, and I was like, it was compelling enough to go to the next page. So uh, I just highly encourage everybody to stick with it because I also believe from being in A Course in Miracles is that there is this timelessness that Mark, I love, uh, you're like doing it at your own pace. It's the only way you can do this is at your own pace. Meeting yourself where you are is the only way you can do this in any mindfulness uh, uh, program. Uh, and then I just loved your words, uh, doing Mark, doing it at my own pace fit me well. And if we could all come to that, because I'm saying these words to you all, and I know in a minute I can say, but you should be. But I'm just find, is finding that if I can find it, that pace within myself, it makes such a difference. And um, I just wanted to go back to Mary Lee. And Mary Lee, I know that you already know this, but I'm, I'm finding out like even if I were to meet a friend at coffee, I would remind myself, this is not about me and Susie going to have coffee. This is something big. So everything that comes to me, a person or phone call, a text, encountering you know people, it's on purpose and it's spirit led and guided. And that moment, whatever it is or who it is, is an opportunity to be present, just to be present. In that, and so that's been helpful to me in thinking about all the all the things that we experience and bringing them to a place of this is important. Pay attention and wake up. <laughs> so, um, okay, thank you. Thank you, Robin. So helpful. Well, we're at time. So uh, next week, for next week, we're going to read chapter 28, section five, the alternate to dreams of fear. So that will be nice. Let's get rid of the dreams of fear. And I'm going to read from the... Um... Can, Linda, can I say one thing? When I was doing the chaplaincy thing, the, the I was a student chaplain, um, the piece of advice that the pastor gave us I don't know if anybody else took it but I did was the most important thing of all was to listen and that's all I did I mean it could have done other things but all I did and I got people like that was the people I went in one room with two guys after their pastor had been there and I'm the one fell asleep, the other one we we're talking, and he said, you know, he says, don't tell my pastor this, but you did, you helped us more than, than that he, he did. But the whole point was, I just listened. Yeah. And I thought, oh, yeah, I didn't have to do anything but listen. Exactly. Yep. People just want to be heard and seen. And uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Nancy Gale. <laughs> So I'm reading um, from the Pathways of Light Insights for Workbook Lesson 81. So um, we're back into the reviews. And so this is a review uh, for I am the light of the world and forgiveness is my function as the light of the world. The truth is I am still as God created me. Nothing has changed. God's light is one. It includes all that is. This is reality. This is the one life that is real. Anything outside of the one life we all live in the mind of God are just hallucin hallucinations that are trying to replace God. These hallucinations come from a conflicted mind. So conflict shows up in the false stories of individual bodies. These individual bodies are perpetually in conflict. These stories make up one problem after another in order to keep the mind preoccupied with the stories of bodies. Forgiveness means letting go of the false stories of conflict and bodies. 
Forgiveness means seeing the false stories for what they are. They are ultimately grievances against God, who created all as one light, one extension of love. Today, I'm willing to practice seeing past the stories to the light, seeing past the stories to the peace of God. Today, I am willing to practice listening to the Holy Spirit, who shows me a new perception, one that leads me home. Today, I am willing to practice opening to the quiet mind and recognizing the truth. Extend peace to all, my brothers. Forgiveness is letting go of identification with and belief in separation. It is letting go of the refusal to accept myself as God created me. It is letting go of insisting on having a special, unique identity that is different from all others. The desire for specialness casts a shadow over the light of the world and makes it appear to be dark and menacing. Conflict is innate in specialness. It requires a constant battle to maintain the illusion of differences, an attempt to make my identity more special by making other identity less. This is the story of the world. We see it played out in disagreements along, among friends or spouses, and we see it played out between nations. All the conflict simply comes from the desire for specialness. It is all grasping at illusions, trying to make them real. In our creation, God gave, all, gave us all his love equally, being one and always the same. He could not give love partially to one and more to another. Thus, specialness is illusion. All the conflicts in the world we perceive are conflicts between illusions. The ego loves to focus on conflict out there and ignore the conflicts in our minds. Peace does not come by looking outside. Peace comes through forgiveness within, through letting go of identification with separation. That is our function here, now. No matter where we see conflict, our function is to see ourselves in all our brothers and thereby recognize it in ourselves. Here we see the sameness we share, the one identity in love. As I can let go of the conflict in my mind, as I can let go of the determination to maintain a separate identity and accept myself as God created me, I bring peace to the world. This is how I am savior of the world. Forgiveness is my function as the light of the world. The form I like to use for the first part of this lesson is this shadow will vanish before the light. It is easy for me to visualize this happening. And when I can visualize something, it helps me to accept it in my mind. I have already had occasion to try this and I like how it feels. It is amazing to me how addicted to conflict my ego is, and even more amazing that I never noticed before. It takes constant vigilance not to fall back into that way of living and thinking. But we're doing it. So there. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. So good to be with you. I'll see y'all next week. Thank you. Love you. Bye. Love you too. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.